Vodafone Germany is a multi-play telecommunications provider owned by the UK-based Vodafone Group, which offers everything from fixed broadband services like DSL to cable TV, cable broadband, and the main focus of this video, mobile communication services using the GSM standard. Vodafone is the second largest mobile network operator in Germany with over 40 million customers, slightly beaten by O2 in terms of customer numbers with telecom not all that far behind as of the last figures that I looked up. Vodafone Germany has spectrum in a variety of standard European GSM bands with 10 MHz paired in 800 MHz, 700 MHz and 900 MHz, 25 MHz paired in the 1800 MHz band, just under 15 MHz paired in 2100 MHz and 20 MHz paired in 2600 MHz. They also possess 25 MHz of 2600 MHz TDD spectrum and also 20 MHz of single downlink as well. In this video I will show what Vodafone Germany's masts look like from an RF layout and antenna and physical infrastructure perspective. In order to ensure a reasonably sensible order in going through these masts, I will work in roughly ascending capacity order. So the first mast that I will cover is the most common sort of standard network deployment for Vodafone in Germany, which has 2G on 900 MHz, 3G on 2100 MHz and 4G on 800 MHz. Now these are clearly three individual frequencies, so three bands, and in Germany diplexes and triplexes aren't typically used. So therefore three bands are presented to the antenna, 2x2 two two MIMO, two feeders per band, so that's six feeders, and typically a triple band antenna is used, such as this example with a triple band Catherine antenna. Although masts do exist where a quad band antenna is used, which then provides expansion capability for the addition of 1800 MHz or 2600 MHz 4G at a later date, which I will go on to a bit later. In terms of masted amplifiers, Vodafone Germany's masts either tend to have no masted amplifiers at all, or they have them on all of the frequencies, or they just have them on only the high bands. Now I've come across these triple band setups which have master amplifiers on all of the ports and some with master amplifiers on none of the ports. Furthermore, some sites have master amplifiers on some frequencies but not on others. So it's not a case of the site just having all master amplifiers or no master amplifiers. There is some middle ground. So now it's time to move on to our next site. So the previous masts only LTE was on the 800 megahertz band for which Vodafone has 10 megahertz paired of. So the next step up from that is 20 megahertz of LTE spectrum and this comes in the form of a site whose LTE is only on band 3 so 4G 1800 megahertz. Now these sites are allegedly masts which have been upgraded rapidly so it's a mask that was 2G900, 2G1800 and 3G2100 and 2100 to rapidly provide LTE 4G coverage to that area they've refarmed the 1800 MHz from 2G to 4G using the existing antenna and mast infrastructure. So the mast is 2G900, 3G2100 and 4G1800 MHz and this is an example of one of those masts which was in the town of Koblenz. I'm not entirely sure how that's meant to be pronounced. The old, le the old looking dual band antenna at the top used to carry the 2G900 and 2G1800 megahertz, but of course now it carries 2G900 and 4G1800 megahertz. Meanwhile, the panel below continues to carry 3G2100 megahertz as before. The master amplifiers feeding the top panel 
the top panels are very old looking and that's in lieu of the fact they probably haven't been upgraded since the mast was carrying 2G900 and 2G1800. The step up from the 20 MHz 4G Spectrum mast is 30 MHz of 4G Spectrum in the form of the 10 MHz paired in the 800 MHz and then 20 MHz of 4G Spectrum either in 1800 MHz or in 2600 MHz, but not both. Regardless of whether the second 4G band is 1800 MHz or 2600 MHz, the masts typically look very much the same, typically using a quad band cathrine antenna, which we saw at the beginning of this video, where it was only carrying three bands, but it had two spare ports, so a spare band on the antenna, for expansion possibilities, which I said I would lead on to. This second example carries 1800 megahertz alongside a variety of other mobile network operators, and it does also use a quad band Catherine antenna to do so. There are some other configurations of this 30 megahertz layout that do exist, however, which use two antennas per sector, two dual band antennas. So in this example, there is one panel specifically for dual bands, which is the much longer one, which then carries the 2G900 and the 4G800. And then there's a dual high band cathrine antenna, which then carries the 4G2600 megahertz and the 3G2100 megahertz. In this case, the two panels for each sector are side by side, but in this example, the antennas are on top of each other. And the antenna for carrying the two low bands, the 2G900 and the 4G800 megahertz, is a slightly different antenna to the one that we saw in the last example. However, fundamentally, it is still performing the same role. This example is rather interesting in that it carries the 2G900, 3G2100 and 4G800 MHz in a standard triple band antenna at the lower stack of the mast, but then it uses sort of microcell style antennas higher up with a large amount of down tilt for 2600 MHz 4G broadcast. The highest capacity masts that Vodafone Germany deploys have in total 50 megahertz of 4G spectrum using the 10 megahertz of 800 megahertz, 20 megahertz of 1800 megahertz and 20 megahertz of 2600 megahertz. So that's 10 plus 20 plus 20, which equals 50. Of course, it's all paired as this is FDD. Now, at least one set of the antennas on this image should be familiar from the example at Coblands. So the top antennas are carrying the 2G900 MHz and 4G1800 MHz, and then lower down is the much newer multiband Cathrine antenna carrying the rest of the frequencies. So the 4G800, the 4G2600, and the 3G2100 MHz. The next example actually works very much the same once the other operators' antennas are forgotten about. It's actually exactly the same configuration, just with the antennas sort of being side by side as opposed to on top of each other. And on this example, I actually got a very high 4G speed despite me using a Vodafone UK SIM in a roaming state, obviously on Vodafone Germany's network. There is also a type of this ultra high capacity Vodafone Germany mast, which instead of using a modern triple band cathrine panel and the old dual band one, it uses two modern triple band antennas with some spare ports. And this is an example of one, which as you can see carries all of the frequencies, so 2G900, 3G2100, 4G800, 4G1800, and 4G2600 megahertz.
the schematic I've chosen for this I'm not completely certain about because there are a lot of different configurations that this could be sort of connected up. However, I feel this is quite a likely representation. The final configuration to speak about is actually the lowest capacity one. However, it's very rare. So I've been unable to really come across that many pictures of it. And this is 2G, 900, 4G, 800. So it's low band only. There's no high band, which therefore means no 3G because in Germany, 3G, 900 megahertz is not used. And this is using two single band cathode antennas, one for 900 megahertz and one for 800 megahertz. Finally, just a note on the broadcast module vendor that Vodafone Germany use. So they have Huawei in part of the country and Ericsson in the other part, both which are very strong, recognized vendors for LTE and network modernization and deployment. So thanks for watching this video on Vodafone Germany. I am obviously going to make videos on the other two net mobile networks in Germany in time. So Telecom Germany and O2 Germany. Although I can't really give a time scale for that because I'm really quite busy at the moment. And just a note to add, this is not an exhaustive guide about the masts that Vodafone deploy in Germany and I can't really guarantee the accuracy of it either because clearly things change all the time and so on.